guys, it's the Mad Master here doing another video. And this one is about radical Islam. I know this is a controversial subject. So I actually wrote this one out, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better quality than my uh, prior attempts at this. But, um, you know, there is an elephant in the room that most of the alt-right types, conservatives, YouTube provocateurs, and other assorted people don't touch. And in my belief, it's converse to what ties so-called moderate Democrats, neoconservatives, and sadly, many in the new Trump administration. What it is, is the insistence of American foreign policy to insidiously support radical Islam throughout the world and its spread. And the idea is that for like 80 years now, the United States has been propping up radical Islamist regimes as well as their proxy armies. And a lot of that was done during the Cold War with Afghanistan and so forth. But um, it really isn't news to many on the dissident left or the libertarian right, the non-interventionist people, you know, like Ron Paul and so forth. Unfortunately, in the wave of anti-immigrant and refugee hysteria, it's often a point lost in the details. I don't hear certain uh, YouTubers talk about this that much, and they just, oh, what are they doing? The refugees and all this stuff. They talk about all this shit. They don't talk about, I mean, that's another subject that's very complicated with Sweden and their, you know, definitions of rape and so forth. Or I was reading all about that. So I was going to do another video about that, but I decided not to. Um, so, but anyways, you know, the fact that Trump has hired neocons and also given carte blanche to U.S. interests in Saudi Arabia, it is a display of pure hypocrisy, you know, with uh, regards to, ban you know, banning certain countries, immigrants. It should give anyone alarm. The problem is that the endless cycle is that the United States follows, you know, this endless cycle over and over again. And I recently watched a great documentary by the famous uh, Adam Curtis called Bitter Lake, which deals with this subject and very well, I might add. So I'd recommend looking that up on YouTube for all those who are interested. Saudi Arabia and Wahhabism are oftentimes a real problem that's fueling this radical jihadism and terrorism. The U.S. supports the regime, but at the same time will bomb civilians, you know, that get in the way in other countries in these proxy wars, support those who are fighting against someone like, say, Assad. And they, these, a lot of these people are also against America, but are just kind of the, it's like this lesser evil politics where you're uh, the friend of, or the enemy of your friend is your friend just for a while and vice versa. So, and then they, you know, after that support falls out, then they follow the radical re religious decree later and go against Western so-called interests. And it can't be understated that the unconditional support of Israel also contributes to this. And, you know, I see dozens of YouTube videos in support of Trump or anti-immigrant laws, but little that mention these facts. You know, it was popular to criticize Hillary for her Middle Eastern business ties, like with the Clinton Foundation. But shouldn't it be equally popular to criticize Trump, for, who supports much of the same interests? And especially with regards to uh, sales to Saudi Arabia of weapons to use in their Yemen war and so forth. So all I'm asking about is, you know, I'm proposing this question. The United States basically, for their own interests, has supported radical Islam and propagated it, you know, with the uh, Saudi Arabia has funded a lot of madrasas around the world that, that teach their brand of Islam. So, you know, there are some places like Indonesia and even Turkey to some extent that aren't really you know, they're not really uh, radical as far as Islam goes as much as the other ones. And, you know, that would be the model to follow somewhat with regards to making a more moderate uh, Islam across the world as far as that goes. I mean, of course, they're not without their problems, but that would be the way to follow is the more moderate countries. And you don't, you don't hear about people from South Asia as far as a lot of terrorists don't come from there. They're usually from the Middle East as far as with Islam. So... It's just a little bit of thought with that, and really that's what I got to say. I just think people are looking at the wrong problem. It's not immigrants that are causing this problem. It's not 
it's the United States. The root of the problem is the United States propping up regimes and crazy uh, forms of Islam. So that's just my opinion, and uh, feel free to subscribe or comment.